Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here with the Megadeth Artist Series. I'm super excited about this one. Uh, I've been studying it for a long time, and I remember in school we had sort of a Megadeth versus Metallica thing happening. Some people would wear Megadeth shirts, some people would wear Metallica shirts. It's sort of a West Side Story kind of thing. But uh, I remember staying home from school one time, just because I got a new Megadeth book, and so I was learning a bunch of licks, and my friend came home, and he was a huge Metallica fan, and uh, he looked really mad at me, and I was like, what's up, man? And he's like, I feel like you betrayed Metallica. So that's how crazy it got back then, but I've always liked both bands, and I believe you can learn a lot from each one. Dave Mustaine has some amazing rhythm chops that are really valuable to learn for your guitar playing, and uh, as well as his lead playing. And of course, all the guitar players he's hired throughout the years have been incredible. Uh, Marty Friedman has been a huge influence on me and his crazy exotic style that we'll get into a little bit here too. All right, so hopefully you guys get as much out of this as I did, and uh, let's get started. The first thing that I noticed when I started studying Megadeth is there's a lot of tendencies that they, they go towards. One of them is the diminished sound, and the diminished sound in the beginning of this song has a really fun technique involved with it. So it's gonna be an arpeggiated diminished lick, and it goes like this. <laughs> And it just keeps building till it gets to the top. All right, so anyways, if you want to play the first part of this, just go to the third string, fifth fret, then the second string, fourth fret, then the first string, second fret. And we're just gonna leave our fingers down, okay? Like this. Totally fine. Now when we play the high note, we're gonna take our pinky on the first string, play the fifth fret, pull it off. So it's gonna be pulling off to the first finger here. And then you're just going to play the second string one last time. The fun part is when you start to bring it up chromatically. Remember, that's one fret at a time. And then speeding up as you go. This is the way I like to pick it. Down, 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 upstroke on the first string, and then an upstroke on the second string. So you get this. There's other ways to pick it, but that's how I found is the best way for me to do this. Okay, let's check it out. All right, so here's the idea. If you just take two notes and just pull off and hammer on, you get that. Follow down a scale. Sounds groovy now, it's got a groove to it. Now add muted E string between them. It's hard not to headbang when you're doing that. Now, if you add the harmony to it, we're harmonizing in thirds. And by the way, thirds is the most common way to harmonize. Remember, we teach a lot of the interval stuff on the main website. But for today, I'll just throw out the term the thirds. And if I play the thirds on top of that, and we put them together with the magic of post-production, uh, check out how that sounds, okay? <laughs> sound great. So not only is it a cool riff in the beginning, but then you harmonize it and boom, my head exploded. Megadeth is known for their super fast riffs and rhythms. And whenever I try to play some of their stuff, I have to remember that there's a good way to approach it and a, a, a way that's going to frustrate you. The way that frustrated me was if you try to play everything perfect right off the bat, um, for example. <laughs> So that's the riff I was trying to play when I first learned it, I was so frustrated. It's because I was looking at the tab and I was actually playing every note, note for note, and uh, starting slow and then trying to speed it up, which is the normal way to learn something, you know? So my recommendation for learning a riff like this is just to start off with a decent tremolo picking on the open D string in this case. And then I like to stab the fingers in at the appropriate moments. If you try to do it all note for note, it gets, it gets a little bit frustrating. Trust me, I've tried that. But if you just start letting your right hand go to autopilot, and then dropping those fingers in whenever you need them, eventually they will sync up, especially if you start off slow enough. Reminds me 
reminds me a lot of when I first started to learn Wasted Years by Iron Maiden. I had the same problem. We all seem to get stuck in our ruts, and one rut that's easy to get stuck in is the minor pentatonic. And if you're playing, for example, an E minor pentatonic, it's easy to just jump to this box and do your normal thing. But sometimes it's fun to break it up a little bit. That's why I like to do this climb. Check this out. <laughs> So it's a diagonal climb using the root note, a flat at five, and then the octave. And you just kind of do that across the entire neck, three strings at a time, okay? So we're gonna group it like that. Now, in the begin uh, beginning of the mechanic solo, that's what he does. Now, the picking is always interesting. You can do all downstrokes, that's fine. And actually at a fast speed, that works too. It feels like you're uh, sweet picking. But there are other ways to pick it, which could be a little bit more economical. For example, I tried this upstroking the first note and then downstroking the next two notes, and it worked pretty well. You just feel like you're working your way across those strings in a very interesting way. It feels a little bit like inside picking, so I don't prefer it, but it's another option. Of course, you can alternate pick all of it. But the problem with that is since it's in threes, the next time you do it, it'll be on an opposite stroke. So that's kind of confusing. Uh, a fourth option, which is more of like a country type thing, it's gonna be Travis picking, pick, pick, then pluck the third uh, note with your middle finger. So that could be pretty fun and useful to some people here country and they don't wanna mix that with things like Megadeth. But techniques are techniques. If they work, you know, go ahead and use them. If you take the idea of playing in thirds, that's something you might learn early on when you start doing scales. That's where you play the root note, and then you skip a note and go to the third interval, come back to the note you skipped, play up another third, and it creates a staggering pattern. Okay, it might sound a little bit classical to you possibly. You can go the other way too. So I like what Dave does. Here he goes. Later on in the tune when there's a solo, there's actually a climb using thirds again in a different scale, but this is so interesting. I'll do it slow first. So it's like you're going backwards, but ascending at the same time. It's this very strange paradox. Got to use the word paradox. You just start off with that concept of skipping a note, coming back. This is gonna be for the Phrygian dominant. I'm hoping you can hear the pattern and eventually you can actually play the pattern and it just starts to feel right. It feels like this groove you get into. It's it's nice. You can go either way. Kind of get that Yngwie Malmsteen sound when you do that or Sinister Gates. Oh man, that one of the songs I was showing my friend when he got mad at me was uh, The Lick. One of the licks from uh, Wake Up Dead. It just rolls off the string. We start off on the first string eighth fret and we're gonna play that note first. And we're gonna pull off to the open string. Then we're gonna go eighth fret to seventh fret and then pull off. So those are all pull offs by the way. Eight to seven pull off to open, pull off, C, B, E. Then we're gonna reverse that and we're gonna come up to the seventh fret, then the eighth fret hammer on and then do a pull off. So we're always ending off with a pull off of some kind. See, after a while, it's like you're going back and forth, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the whole time you're pulling off to that E string, which keeps the sound happening. Okay, this whole video series is pretty much a result of a lot of people talking about the Dave Mustaine spider technique. And uh, I, I have my own spider exercise that I do, that I do for a warm up, where I just do like chromatics going up, like. <laughs> But when it comes to the Dave Mustaine spider technique, he does it in a rhythmic way. And by the way, he teaches this on YouTube somewhere. Just look it up. Uh, he goes through his explanation of how he came up with it. But I'll just show you a quick version uh, of it. If you want just to practice it, let's go to the fifth string, seventh fret, which is E. Do a power chord. And then just for fun, I want you to go to the sixth string, eighth fret, C. 
and do a power chord and go back and forth as fast as you can, okay? So go. You probably notice there's a lot of movement that you have to do to make that happen. So I believe that's what Dave Mustaine encountered and then he's like, how could I do this better? So what he does is he'll keep these fingers here and he'll use his other two fingers. Why not? They're sitting right there, right? And as you bring those down, you're able to do this really cool switch without having to move your hand as much. So watch this. And the only difficult thing is actually the dexterity involved because these two are already down and now you have to move these other two fingers which aren't really used to doing this motion. Now, if you take part of their song and utilize this technique, it makes total sense, watch. Faster it would be. Right? Try to do that without doing the spider technique. It's a lot harder and I can see why he chose to, to develop this technique. Okay, most of us know how to pick scrape, right? But Dave uses it in a very rhythmic way. And it's fun because you get to kind of bounce the pick across the string. Uh, first of all, there is pick bouncing that I taught on one time on a, on a video. You could do the robot talking. Something like that. Anyways, um, Dave sort of does that for this song. See that, the three? It's gotta be in time. The hardest part for me is you're down here. And then you pick scraping, and then you have to come right back up and be ready for that. So it does take a little bit of practice to get these techniques going. I realize he does this really cool legato trick, which is this. He'll do a grouping of eight. So at first you're thinking, oh, that's only seven. But then the pinky comes down and saves the day. Now, if you take that one grouping and put it across the strings, you can actually get a pretty smooth sounding legato technique. Move it over. Yep, even on those two strings, keep it in the same shape. The last one changes a little bit. And knowing Chris Poland's technique from what I've seen recently, it's a lot of just one direction picking, almost like you're sweep picking. But while doing that, you're, you're doing some crazy left hand thing to fill in the, the gaps. So, medium speed. Play it about that speed for a while till you know everything's perfect and then try to go for some speed bursts. Now, when I did the speed bursts, I realized the importance of that pinky because it helps you walk to the next string really in a cool way. See, it fills in that gap right there. So just take maybe two or three strings in the beginning and do some speed bursts. So, now connect them. See how nicely that connects? And the song In My Darkest Hour was a huge anthem for me when my angsty teen years. And I remember at the end, he adds a little bit of an artificial harmonic to each thing. We do a whole in-depth study about artificial harmonics. I do them a little bit differently than a lot of people. I know some people bring their thumb to the edge of the pick to make the artificial harmonic. What I like to do though is I don't like to change my hand position or my thumb position when I'm trying to do a technique. So just like when I tap, I don't like to drop my pick and all of a sudden do this. I'll keep my pick where it is and then just use my other fingers. So what I do instead is as I pick a string, I'll just touch with the side of my thumb knuckle on the string itself, creating like a natural harmonic type sound. <laughs> So that's just a quick little example of that. But if I do it simultaneously, I can 
get all the harmonics out of it. Speaking of natural harmonics, those are called artificial pinch harmonics, by the way, uh, but we did mention the natural harmonics. That's where you just touch a string at certain locations. <laughs> The best part of artificial harmonics is you can hit them and let go, and they'll just keep going. And if you're using a whammy bar, that's a great way to get some dive bomb sounds. Well, Dave uses these in rhythm. So for example, in one song, there's that going on. That's just seventh fret harmonics. You could easily just went and just did palm muting. But to add the harmonic is actually a little more interesting sometimes. And he does the same thing in Holy Wars when he goes down to the third fret harmonic. Now keep in mind, third fret harmonics are a little more difficult to have come through. It's just in a very detailed location. You'll find when you start playing in this area for harmonics, it sometimes it takes a lot of practice to get precise. But if we go to the sixth string third fret, you get this real metallic trashy kind of sound and he utilizes it perfect for this part. First time I heard that, I'm like, what is he doing? It sounds crazy. Because he not only has the harmonic happening, he's also doing his patented Dave Mustaine machine gun right hand technique. And, uh, you know, that's just where he's real tight with his right hand, very accurate, and it sounded awesome. Let's kind of piggyback off that riff for another technique, which is, you know how usually we do fifths, which are also called power chords, and you get this sound? <laughs> That's pretty typical, right? I mean, you've got the, everything in metal seems to revolve around the power chord. Okay. But why not try a different interval sometimes and see how that sounds? So in this particular example, Dave uses a third interval. So we like to talk about intervals a lot on the website. That's where if you take the first note and you go up a scale, major scale, three notes, that third note, if you played with the first note, realize you can't play two notes on the same string, so you move this B note over to the next string, second fret. Okay, same note. Go back and add the root note, and you get this sound. Now leave it to Megadeth to make a major third interval sound very doomy, but they do. So watch when you replace the power chord with this third interval instead. Doesn't that just scream rust in peace? It's like a big sound in that album. So especially if you move it back and forth, a half step, it sounds very dark. Put that together with that natural harmonic thing and you've got a classic. If you take the beginning of Holy Wars, here's what I thought it was. Dave was talking about how a guy was teaching it online and uh, he was doing it incorrectly and it might have been because a lot of guitar magazines transcribed it incorrectly back in the day. So he actually, I saw a picture of him at a computer writing out the real tab, it was funny, but he says to go like this. <laughs> So there's a detail right there. There's a third fret to fifth fret before the power chord instead of just opens like I was doing earlier. There it is again, a little more difficult because you got to get to that. Maybe he uses the spider technique, not sure. And then, and then you want to go up here because it makes sense, but he actually goes here. Interesting. Remember, I'm not here to teach you the riff. You can look that up. Uh, Dave Mustaine teaches Holy Wars, probably. But I just want to show you that his attention to detail does make a difference. Back to here. And then. If you think about the lick here. Doesn't that sound evil? So the D minor played with distortion. Usually when people do that kind of thing, it's in clean sound or an acoustic guitar. Or if there is distortion, they sweep pick it. But this is just using it like in a clean situation, but with distortion, gives it kind of this evil sound. Just the way the, the harmonics are mixing together when you do that. Hear how much that sounds crazy with dis uh, diminished distortion?
Now, one thing I know we botched, we worked on it, my friend and I did, uh, it's the four pattern that happens right before the main riff. Not in the beginning, but after the first uh, set of solos. And here's what ends up happening. That's very difficult. Whenever I teach the shred scale, I always like to teach it in fours. Just because you could feel pretty cool once you get that down and you're really shredding it, it's part of the slash shred, uh, shred video that we did. And I realized that a lot of people, including myself, have trouble going backwards and doing fours because it just feels bizarre, watch. There's just something that feels like you're laboring when you have to do that. So it takes a lot of metronome work. I remember my friend and I would work on it because it's harmonizing on that part, and we'd go really slow. I remember I couldn't even hit that last note because I had to get back to doing that riff. So if you can work out all those awkward feelings when doing uh, descending fours right now, it's only to your benefit because you're definitely going to be using that pattern in the future. We had talked about harmonizing in thirds, which is very common, but why not try harmonizing in fifths? Now, as a guitar player on your own, you might do a lot of fifth harmonizing by doing power chords, but if you bring in another guitar player and do a riff, sometimes like if it's a single line riff with single notes happening, the other person can take care of the fifths for you in a situation that would be impossible to do with a power chord. Here's what I mean. So if you do something like this, add a fifth above it instead of a third one time. And check out how it sounds. It's a little bit Iron Maiden, a little bit of that Egyptian sound, in my opinion. It sounds like this. All right, actually, this next song is a half step down, but I'm in standard tuning, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you don't want to do the, the normal thing. Like, that's Dave Mustaine's main deal. It seems like he loves to change things up just a little bit to make it his own. And so instead of doing palm mutes for this song and going like this, which would be a really sweet riff still, he elected to mute the strings completely. So if you're already doing palm muting and then you take your fingers and just touch the strings, remember, don't push into them. You don't want them to make contact with the frets. You're just touching them, just to kill the uh, possibility for any real sounds to come through. You just want a dead thud when you hit those strings. Hear how dead that is? That's what you're going for in this case. And it adds a sort of attack that you wouldn't have if you did open palm muting. You think Cub is from hell? But Dave went ahead and just muted everything. What a great sound. I just love how it catches the beat. It's more like a percussive instrument when you do it that way. And then when I saw them live and they did this, it was just hitting me in the chest because of the power of the muted string. Of course, you can't do a Megadeth video without talking about the artistry of Marty Friedman. So I was talking about my teenage band. You may have seen the video of us playing Ride the Lightning at the Junior High Talent Show. <laughs> Well, we ended up getting pretty good, and we we're up for opening a show. Uh, the booking agent said we could open a huge show in the summertime, and one of the shows was Megadeth. And we we're like, okay, this is our dream come true. And at the last minute, we didn't get the gig someone else did. But they felt bad for us, so they let us roadie the show. And I remember being backstage, going to the bathroom, looking, looking over in the urinals, and seeing a bunch of hair, curly brown hair, and I realized Marty Friedman was peeing next to me, so... I always thought that was a funny story, if I can name drop real quick. Anyways, I've always loved his style. You know, I used to listen to his solo work, his work in Cacophony, and it's always been exotic to me, and I always wondered how he did what he did. And a lot of it is his bending mastery. He does his vibrato, he does his half-step bends into things, he's got his little tricks, and they're amazing when he puts them together. It's very expressive. That's why it's hard to emulate Marty Friedman because it's really just his own thing that he does to every single note. Here are a couple of tips to maybe get you started in the right direction. First of all, whenever you hear his vibrato, it always sounds like this in slow motion. It's wide and it's like a whole step up and down wave. 
So keep that in mind when you start to develop your, your vibrato. If you really want to get that expressive vibrato, sometimes you have to practice at a whole step. Okay, that's slow. You want to make sure you start there. Now, he will go. Half step bend. Then he does this really interesting thing where he bends up the 15th fret of the first string, up a whole step. And in doing that, he's also bending the second string 15th fret up. You may have done that before with double bends. But if you hit him one at a time, you get this effect. So the second note was already bent up like a pre-bend and then you could drop it down a little bit at the end. So it's this meet up at the top, both strings, but only pick one at a time. So now he takes the 15th fret again pre-bends it up, drops it down. It's a big Friedman trademark, by the way, the pre-bend. 14th fret, half step pre-bend, which is another Friedman trademark. Bring it down, coming down to the second string, 15th fret, bending it up and hitting that note. Compare that to this. That's without doing all the bends. That's just fretting the notes. So you see how much of a difference that does make. All right, like I said before, I teach a spider exercise where I do a warm up like this. That's basically where I'm going one, two, three, four with my fingers. Then I do variations of it. And one thing that Dave does during sweating bullets is he does the opposite of that, four, three, two, one, but he does it in this really cool chromatic pattern. Remember chromatic is one half step going up or down. So I always joke and say, this is a chromatic scale. The world's fastest scale. It's true. But in this case, he's putting it across the strings, doing four notes on each string, but it's counted like in threes, which is very interesting. So first I'll just show you the, the uh, technique. So that's just backwards. So you notice I jumped up a fret here. That's the old chromatic scale. Then from there, you just go to the second string and you keep going. And by the end, you're way up here. It's crazy. So if I went the other way and just to the chromatic scale, I would have to shift like that as well. So that's a fun way to play a scale and it looks cool. You're doing this shift every time. But putting this into the song, remember, it's in that three feel. So even though you're playing four notes as you descend, you still want to think of it in threes. I'll count it out loud, okay? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you get the idea? Let's put it together. Difficult in its own way. Octave tapping. The reason I grabbed this guitar, by the way, is there's 24 frets, so I can do this. We're gonna tap on the 24th fret, pull off to the 12th fret. So right away you get an octave effect. Now if you pull off to the seventh fret after that, so you're going from E with a pinky to B with the first finger, you get this. Then you can move your right hand around. Doesn't that sound great? So I'm just playing a scale with my right hand as I keep this going continuously. Now there's some debate on the end where it goes, but here's what I like to do. Then just, some people go back to the fifth fret. Sounds kind of weird to me. So I'm just doing it my way for now. The overall idea for this is the idea of octave tapping, hitting an octave, pulling off, and then going somewhere else with it, it's up to you. Okay, another technique I need for this guitar for, because it has a more range up in the high area, is going to be the crazy stretches Dave does during the Hangar 18 solos. He's insane, man. His left hand goes from the 14th fret to the 17th fret to the 21st fret. That's a killer stretch. So don't kill your hand, make sure you're warmed up. Do the finger yoga we teach on the website, very important, and then, Go ahead and get your hand just started there. That's fine. We're gonna do a few of the techniques on the highest string first. First technique is just pull off, highest to low, and then just going back and doing another pull off from the 17th to the 14th fret. 
without picking the second tab. Get a nice legato. Totally fine too. Go to the next string, do it twice. Or, by the way, I, I pick more than legato in this case. Next string. You can tell my hand's working hard because I got the veins going on there. Okay, so let's go ahead, start from the top, only once on this string. Next string twice. Same with the next. Keep going. All right, that's where it hurts. Okay, that's the descending pattern he does. And then on the way up, we're gonna do a different pattern. And this time, let's start on the high string just so I can teach you the pattern. We're gonna go low to high hammer on, pull off, hammer, hammer. So it's like this. Low high, back to low, middle high. Without picking a second time, you get this. And in this case, I will only pick once, okay? Now, we need to do this on all six strings. So let's go all the way to the fat string. Quickly move to the next one. After a while, you get this nice flow going. So I'm just gonna do this on the high three strings for a second. Work that out, remember to take little breaks. All right, you guys may have heard of some exotic scales. You know, we've got the double harmonic major, we've got Phrygian dominant, all that good stuff. Well, Marty Friedman does a great job utilizing these scales and modes in a cool way for Holy Wars. And it's taken me a while to figure this part out. I had to do a lot of slowing down videos and really watching different people play it. <laughs> So the one tip I have for that, for this technique, the technique really is the exotic scales, the use of the exotic scales, but this part gave me the most trouble. Just the picking is very strange. So I elected to do more of an economy picking type thing, where I do an upstroke on the high string and then two downstrokes. Creates this really cool circle feeling. And you get this. sort of rolls off your pick, if you will. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching the Megadeth Artist Series. This one has been very challenging for me, but it was a dream for me to put it out there, and I feel like I became a better guitar player through the process. So be sure to check out the website. We do a lot of the theory breakdowns over there because I don't want you guys just to play things by watching me. I want you to understand them as well, so don't forget to do that. And we'll catch you guys soon in the next video. Okay.